Now, good morning, boys and girls. Today, I'll discuss with you, or rather, I'll explain to you about active voice and passive voice. This explanation is meant for class 6 onwards, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the classes, active and passive voice. and passive. Words. Now, since you all of you belong to the secondary section, secondary classes, you all know there are three kinds of work. Work, there are three kinds of verb. Number one is, we call it transitive verb. Transitive verb. Number two, intransitive verb. Number three, auxiliary verbs. These are the three kinds of verb. Transitive, intransitive, and auxiliary verbs. Now when we learn about the active or passive voice, active means active, but it is active, the verb is active, and passive means silent. Now, this transitive verb, this transitive verb, It consists of the voice, two voices. Transitive verb has only got, only the transitive verb has only got two voices. It has two voices. One is, we call it active voice. And the second one, we call it Passive voice. We call it passive voice. These are the two voices. Sometimes intransitive verb also has a voice, but that is in case when the intransitive voice has got a cognate object. Only then it carries a voice. Now, so transitive verb has got two voices. And that two voices is known, one is known as active voice, another is known as passive voice. Now, boys and girls, let me tell you, what is voice? What is the word of the voice? What is voice meant for in grammar, in English grammar? You have to understand it in detail, you have to understand it very, very carefully, very, very carefully, you have to understand it. What is the voice? Voice means the mood of the world. What does the voice show? Identify you, depicts in a sentence. What does the voice tells us about in an English emphatic and emphatic sentence? Now, a voice tells us what the subject is, whether the subject is the doer of the action or the receiver of the action. Voice of the verb tells us whether the subject, whether the subject, subject in a sentence, in general it's the noun, the subject, whether the subject is the doer. I'm analyzing this doer of the action. Whether the subject is the doer of the action, that means if the subject is the doer of the action, it is active. Or whether 
the subject is the receiver of the action. Where the subject is the receiver of the action. If it is the receiver, if the subject is the receiver of the action, then we call it passive. The voice, this is the word for the voice. It tells us whether the subject is the doer of the action, if it is the doer of the action, it is active voice, if it is the receiver of the action, we call it passive voice. That is the way to identify a sentence, whether the sentence is an active voice, written in active voice or passive voice. And now, with an example, I will explain to you now how to determine whether the sentence is an active voice or practical voice. See, with an example I will tell you now. See, I am writing a sentence. Ravi helped Manish Ravi helped Manish In this sentence, now see Ravi is the subject. This is the subject. Helped is a verb. And Manish is the object, a transitive sentence you have learned in your previous junior classes. A transitive verb always needs an object to complete the sentence. So Rabi is the subject, help is a verb, object is Manish. So Rabi helped Manish. The subject, see the subject helps Manish. It helps Manish. That means it is doing some work, some action, but it is helping Manish. Ravi is helping Manish. Subject is doing the action. Subject is the doer of the action part. It is helping Manish. So this sentence is active. Words. Now, similarly, without changing the meaning of the sentence, I'm converting this sentence into a passive form. See what the voice of the verb tells us? It tells us in passive, the subject becomes the receiver of the action. The subject here, Rabi will become the receiver of the action. Now, when I, now the same sentence, in a, written in a different way, having the same meaning. Manish was held by Ravi. Manish was held by Ravi. See in this sentence, subject is Manish, was held is the verb. Ravi is the object. Ravi is the object. So here see Manish is in passive form. He is receiving the action. What action? He is being helped by Ravi. He is being helped by Ravi. Helped by Ravi. Subject Manish is receiving the action part. Here the subject is doing the action part, helping Manish. Here Manish is receiving the help from Ravi. So this is in the passive form. Passive voice. So when we interchange 
when we interchange from active to passive, boys and girls, keep one thing in mind, stick it to your mind, stick it to your memory. When we change it from active to passive, when we change it from active to passive, see, in the active, the subject in the active becomes the object in the passive. It becomes the object in the passive. The subject of the active becomes the object in the passive, and the object of the active part Active voice becomes the subject of the passive voice. Now, you should also keep in mind about the other two most important things which a student should stick into or his or her minds while transforming this sentence, changing the voice. <coughs> changing the voice from active to passive. What we should do, what we should follow in the basic. In the basics, what we should follow, what we should stick to, what we should avoid from active to passive. Point number one, as I told you just earlier, the subject in the active voice becomes the object in the passive while the object the object in the voice becomes the becomes the subject in the passive. This is the first part which you should follow while changing the voice of a sentence from active to passive. Now, the second most another important rule <coughs> which you should follow is this is the second point. <coughs> In the passive, that means while changing it from active to passive, the verb we
We use the form of this B, verb B. There are eight forms of B, like is, was, have, were, we use this. Okay, I'll continue in the next slot. Because 